This month, I'm going to talk to you about Sweet. collections. Uh, I'm shocked I haven't talked about this before earlier because it is really a great package. Um, it's part of the standard lib. Um, I'm using Python 3.3, so there's a couple of things, but I'll point out that are only available in 3.3 actually. Uh, so start, let's just get our stuff from collections. Um, let me talk about the weirdest thing in, in collections, thing I've never really used in anger, uh, something called a DQ. It's a fast in-memory list for certain operations if you want to add stuff to the left or to the right. So, you know, if you're talking about millions of things you're adding at one time, uh, this does very fast memory operations for insertions bef in, uh, before and afterwards, as opposed to the regular Python list, which is a bit slower. There's special methods and stuff. You'll know when to use it when things are really slow and it gets really awkward. Um, otherwise, use regular lists. Um, the rest of the stuff, however, is really cool. Uh, let me talk about one of my favorites, default dict. The, the default dict. Default dict, it's a bit hard to explain. What it does is it takes one argument, it's called a constructor in the docs. What it is is a function that whenever it's like a dict, so it smells like a dict, talks like a dict, sounds like a dict, <laughs> um, except that whenever it has a key error, instead of raising a key error, whenever it cannot find a key, it will, fr it, it, it will pass uh, the key through uh, the constructor function that you're passing through, right? So, uh, actually, sorry, it'll call the constructor function and return that and set that. So if you ever used a set default on a dictionary, it's sort of like that, but does it automatically from the get-go with, with the function you pass in the default deck. Int in Python is a function. If you call int with no arguments, you get zero, right? So what you can, uh, so what you can do is djan, for example, for January, say, plus equal one. So let's try to look for djan, cannot find it because d is empty, because that's how, that's how we built it. It'll set it to zero automatically because I call it with int and add one to it. And if I call, say, something else, it'll be zero. And if I sort all the items, I get February and January one, because January was zero and I added one uh, above it. Um, I imagine you've all done sort of, let's say if you had to sort out plenty of dates, let me see, what, what's a ra yeah, you know, it just dates around the calendar. Have I missed one? Did I put any in bad months? No, I don't think so. Um, let's say I wanted to group them by year, right? So I call my default dict. I call the list. Again, uh, a list, if you just call list, will give you an empty list. So um, let me go through my, dat my dates. And by year n, zero, so n zero being the year, I append my n. And I can append because there's no key error because it turns into a list every item. And suddenly, I get my year by items, and they're all sorted by year, 2011, 2012. Um, you've all done this code the hard time, uh, the, the hard way, so a default is really fun. Especially you can pass in your own function, so if you have some really crazy things you want to do, just pass a function, takes no arguments, return what you want. And as opposed to set default, where your second argument is going to get instantiated, that function is going to get called when you're missing something. So if you want to call a function that's very expensive but not all the time, you can use it. Um, also, the counter. Counter is really great. Counter is a specialized uh, uh, version of, I guess, the default dict, where it's a default dict with my int here, where basically everything's equal to zero off the bat. So in my counter, I pass any iterable, and, and I can add to that if I want to. So again, collections is a string, is an iterable, it's getting every letter at the time. So I just say, see that letter, add one. And I can add, like, Find me the five most common things, right? This is really f frequent in my code. Find me, give me a huge list of stuff, get me the most common, the three most common, the top five, the top 10, and it'll spit you out plus the count for each of those, right? So these are all the most common letters in the two strings I passed in one by one. Um, you know, otherwise, the way you're doing it normally in regular code is uh, get a dict and then go through my thing, right? And then if n is in counter, counter n plus 1 else, counter n equals 1, and you always screw it up as I always do. It took me a couple of times to do this. And yeah, it's just a pain. Just use counters. It's great. Um, and da -da 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 -da. and oh yeah, also to get the most common, it's really complicated kind of code that I always screw up when I write by hand. So the most common method is superb. Um, now my favorite part of the library, I've got 18 seconds, I'll do it really fast. Name tuple. Name tuple is really great. Use it, please, please, even if I get cut off. Uh, when name tuple, it's like a tuple, smells like a tuple. So this is a tuple. Use it everywhere you do use a tuple. And you can 
print it, and it gets all these. So all of these are fields, speakers, length, and title, and they become fields here. And you can use them exactly like you would with a tuple. And the cool thing is you can, uh, you can access things by attributes. So in your code, instead of doing a, P0 everywhere, you can do P.speaker, and I am done. But please use name tuple.